My name is Sandhya Swishweshwaraya. I'm a professor at the Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. So I basically am a biologist and at, at present the focus of my research is basically in understanding gut function. Now we all take our uh, digestive system for granted on a day-to-day -day basis because we're not even made aware of it. But there are certain genetic conditions or certain diseases that affect the gastrointestinal tract. And when your gut is malfunctioning, the whole of you seems to malfunction as well. And Hippocrates said many years ago that all disease begins in the gut. And we are now becoming more and more aware why that's the case. So what we're interested in doing is studying a particular protein that's present in the gut of mammals. And it regulates iron and fluid secretion in the gut. And when uh, bacterial toxins bind to this receptor, uh, this, this protein gets activated and that results in the diarrhea that is associated with these bacterial toxins. Um, we've been studying this protein for quite some time, looking at how it's regulated, etc. But uh, about five years ago, I was approached by clinicians in Norway and they had identified a family where uh, there was constitutive diarrhea in these children from the time of birth. And uh, because they realized that there was a family connection, they did genetics and they were able to identify a mutation in uh, the protein I work with, which, call, which resulted in activation of this protein and therefore the diarrhea was seen in these families. Subsequent to our first report, there have been a number of other reports and now Hitherto, nobody thought that this protein was mutated in incidences of constitutive and congenital diarrhea. But now after our publication, we've been a, people have become aware that maybe when patients come to them with this problem, the mutation could lie in this protein and therefore that could be the cause. So what we've been trying to do is understand a little bit more about how this diarrhea happens. In order to do that, uh, we've been generating mice that uh, mimic this mutation so that we can understand this phenomenon in mouse models. That allows us, of course, to be able to do a lot more molecular analysis than you could do with patients. And the long-term goal, hopefully, is, of course, that maybe from our research, therapeutics to be able to help these patients may emerge in future. But that's a long way away, because without understanding the basic biology, it will be difficult to predict the outcomes in. Um, we are paid to do what we love to do and that is a great privilege especially being in academics as a scientist and yes you've planned an experiment yes you have a hypothesis you hope the experiment proves your hypothesis but it might not and if it doesn't you churn your brain all over again and think what was what could be different how can i do this better so it's that uh, excitement you have of coming in every day really not knowing what the day has in store for you i think that's what's magical